guys, it's Sarah Jane. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to bring you my August wrap up. So I managed to read a grand total of four books in August. I'm happy with that. I moved house on the 1st of August. So the fact that I managed to read, you know, perhaps more than one is pretty impressive in my book. So let's get going with the first book that I read. Also, I would just like to point out that I'm not wearing pyjamas. Like, it really looks like I am. These are not pyjamas, this is a shirt. So the first book that I have to talk about is The Bones of You by Debbie Howells. So The Bones of You is not my usual read at all. I got an email from Pam Macmillan asking if I would like a copy of the book for review. I read the blurb because, you know, I always read the blurb, even if I don't think it's going to be the kind of book that I'm interested in. And I thought, you know what? This sounds really, really intriguing. The story is about an 18 year old girl called Rosie who disappears and the small town that she lives in will never be the same again. Our protagonist Kate is a mother and she knew Rosie because Rosie used to go and help her with her horses and when Rosie disappears Kate takes it really to heart and she can't help but try and find out what really happened. So the story is told from two perspectives. We have Kate who is our protagonist, she lives in a small town, she's a mother, she's a gardener, she loves her horses. And we also have Rosie, who is the girl who's gone missing, and she tells us stories from her past. And between the two of them, we slowly start to put these puzzle pieces together. I did find it a little bit hard to connect Kate as a character. You know, I don't have anything in common with her. I'm not a parent. I'm not into gardening. She's living this family lifestyle. I can't connect to that. That's not my preferred protagonist but at the same time it was very very enjoyable reading something that was completely out of my comfort zone something that was completely different and it's a very very good book after I read the book I also gave it to my mum to read which I don't often do with my books because she wouldn't like the sort of things that I read but she read this book as well and she absolutely loved it what I love about multi-perspective books is when you know who you're reading without seeing the name at the top of the chapter page and that's what this book was like it was a very very well written book and I found myself really enjoying it and I gave it four out of five stars the next book that I read was Guilty Pleasures by Laurel K. Hamilton. So as you guys know pretty damn well by now, I am a huge fan of the Viva series and a lot of people on booktube are now picking up this series which is making me so happy but it kind of got me in the mood for some more urban fantasy. I wasn't sure what to pick up but I know that Sam from Thoughts on Tones really loves the Anita Blake series so I decided I would pick up the first book called Guilty Pleasures. I bought this on my Kindle because it was only 99p and because it's such a huge series I didn't want to commit to buying it like in paperback form at this present time. <sighs> Story of my life. Why do I still do this? So Anita Blake is a kick-ass vampire hunter and necromancer who lives in an alternate reality where vampires, werewolves and all other kind of supernatural creatures exist. This story blends kind of detective fiction with supernatural fiction and pushes the two of them together and I really really enjoyed it. Anita Blake is sassy, she's sarcastic, she has a very dry sense of humour and I absolutely love that about her. She was a very very enjoyable protagonist. The only issue that I really had with this story I guess was, well actually I have two, is the pacing. What I love about urban fantasy is that as a rule generally the first page really really grips you as a reader. This book did that, it did, but as I kind of got a little bit further into the story I felt like the pacing was a little bit off and I didn't feel like much story was happening and the other thing that I found really really difficult was that there was loads of characters which is fine I love loads of characters but I felt that I was getting a little bit distracted about like who was who and when certain people were turning up at other places and it was meant to be like a oh my god that's so and so I was like who is this when did we meet them who are they what are their intentions what do they look like I did really enjoy Anita as a protagonist. I love her sense of humour. I love the writing style of this book. I am going to continue on with the series. I gave this one three out of five stars because I did really enjoy it, but for the reasons that I mentioned, it wasn't a book that absolutely gripped me. But at the same time, I get the feeling that I am going to become addicted to it because I just love Anita. The next book that I decided to pick up was Shadows by Paula Weston. Shadows is the first book in the Refame series, which is a young adult urban fantasy series about fallen angels. I'm saying young adult because that is the vibe I'm getting from it right now, but the protagonist is 18, so I don't know if that's completely right, but that's how I'm feeling right now, where it goes. So I read this book as part of a read-along hosted by Casey from Casey Ann Books. I normally research books so much before I pick them up, but she tweeted me and she said, Sarah Jane, I think you're really going to like this book. And I just went, yeah, right. I bought the book, I joined in with the read-along, and it was really, really fun. I loved 
this story. It's been a year since our protagonist Gabby Winters saw her brother Jude die in a horrific car accident. Her grief is still brought and constant and she has nightmares about hell beasts and then this mysterious guy called Ruffa comes to town. This Ruffa guy starts telling her things about herself and about her brother that she feels couldn't possibly be true but the truth of this lies in the shadows of her nightmares. So I thoroughly enjoyed this book. I felt like it was very addictive. It had a really good writing style. It had good pacing. I loved the characters. I loved the setup of the world, but at no point did it feel info dumpy. I gave this book four out of five stars and I have already bought the rest of the series. The final book that I read in August was Menagerie by Rachel Vincent. Before I get into explaining this story, guys, I just have to say that I loved it so much so much that it is up there with my favourite books of this year so far. So before I get started I have to say a massive massive thank you to Franny from Franny in the Pages. She let me know that Menagerie was up on NetGalley for review. I went and requested it and it was approved and I was just like thank you, thank you so much. I love her other books so so much but this book is like nothing I have ever read before and I'm still thinking about it like two weeks later I still just sit there and I think about how amazing this book is and I just want the next book. When Delilah gets surprise tickets to the menagerie for her birthday she is a seemingly ordinary girl in a not so ordinary world. The menagerie is a traveling circus of hybrids, of mythological creatures, of shifters, of mer people. There's minotaurs, there's kelpies, there are so many mythological creatures trapped inside this traveling circus known as Metzger's Menagerie. But when Delilah visits the menagerie, she discovers that there is something else hidden beneath her human veneer and she is captured, stripped of her human rights and put on show in the menagerie. Delilah is now property of the menagerie. She is there as an exhibition to be looked at, to be bought, to be sold. They can do whatever they like with her because she now has no human rights whatsoever and she is literally property. Rachel Vincent manages to blend this intense immersive carnival magic with a really dark story about humanity. It is so breathtakingly good that I feel like I literally inhaled it and this story is everything that I didn't even know that I wanted and I can't even put into words how brilliant this book is. All I will say is that you just have to pick it up because it is just like nothing I've ever read before. So it kind of goes without saying that I absolutely gave this book 5 out of 5 stars. I'm not doing TBR parts to these videos anymore because I'm quite enjoying just going with the flow and picking up whatever I feel like but one book I absolutely will be picking up in September is The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiebarter. So The Raven Boys is Random Read-Alongs book for September. If you would like to find out more about The Raven Boys or more about Random Read-Alongs, then I will link that video down below. So that is it for my August wrap-up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments if you have read any of the books that I've mentioned or if you're eager to pick some of them up after hearing about them. But that's it for this video and I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye! I can't handle it. Like, I literally can't handle it, guys. It cracks me up so much. There was one video and she knows when she's watching this, she's gonna know exactly what I'm talking about before I say it.